excited to try. today narration yeah hey and now we're gonna take this all right I know you're excited we have to go film oh geez my hands are full got it sorry ZB See you again. I know, I'm sorry girl. Today, I'm going to narrate in the woods. Um, this truck, this truck will do. Zoom in a little bit, I think. How's that? That's good. Check audio. How are we looking on audio? Is that all right? I think we're good. I think we're pretty good. Hello, my friends, and welcome once again to the Tower of Chris. I am Chris. Today, I'm going to show you a series of events, and I'm going to talk about them. So my last video was slightly different format. Uh, there wasn't any any narration, and I quite liked how it turned out. Uh, hopefully you did too. Unfortunately, there was so much that happened while I was staying in Myrtle Creek that in my next video, I, I can't do the same thing. I left out so much. So I'll be honest, I don't have any footage from the drive down to California. That's where I knew I needed to go. I took I-5 down to the 199. I took 101 down the coast, but my destination was Ukiah, California. Um, now in Ukiah, uh, I found a host. I guess I thought I was going to the city of Ukiah. Uh, it, it actually turns out I was going about 10 miles up a mountain outside of town. Um, it was a very remote location. I arrived late. It was nighttime. I couldn't see the property very well. Um, all I saw is this, this huge ridge line, and we were at the top. It was just a blanket of fog enveloping the mountains. The, the ocean was maybe 30 miles away, something like that. And, uh, and the Milky Way was super bright above us. It was amazing. You know, I, I met Seth, uh, our host, seemed like an awesome guy, um, but I couldn't really see the property in its full glory until the next morning.
attraction that brought me here in the first place was the house that was being built. Um, and since it wasn't finished, everyone staying on the property was, was living in a myriad of different locations. So there were vans, tents, trailers, things like that. Uh, and I got familiar with where I'd be living. So I met the residents. Uh, we have Tim, the carpenter, contributing to the house. His wife, Selena, an Italian immigrant who first came for the culture and stayed for the love that she found. And we had Dandelion, one of the owners of the property, who's famous for her love of fun and more holistic-based spiritual practice, which you can see here and that we'll touch on later. Oh, and Anna, Selena's childhood friend who is visiting from Italy. And Seth, Dandelion's husband and main caretaker of the property, and their daughter, Lilikoi. Now, Seth and Dandelion are a inspiring story of a self-sufficient homestead. I realized after the drive how remote this place really was. You know, it's, it's 10 miles up this curvy, unmaintained road. Emergency services have to reach you by helicopter. Um, in the winter, mudslides are a common occurrence that can make the road unpassable. I just got a drip of water in my eye. Yet, this out of the way from civilization, the community still thrived. They embodied the living off the land mentality, even more so than other examples I've seen in my few months of experience on the road. They're able to support a growing family by their own means, you know, a well that provides clean water, solar energy for electricity and, and even hot water, and they had an organic garden where they were able to provide a lot of food for themselves. The house was built almost entirely of straw bales. Um, that's what made up most of the infrastructure of the walls. Uh, it's super low impact, super efficient at, at keeping heat, way more than you know regular drywall you'd see in, in uh, modern homes. Um, but because of this, the walls needed to be made of a plaster, um, and a lot of it. This was the recipe that Seth came up with. We had one bucket of water, one bucket and one quart of clay slick, two buckets of sifted soil. two and a half buckets of sand, and three buckets of shredded straw. Now this was just the first of three layers that needed to be applied. The more straw in the mix, the thicker and drier it'll be, but the straw and the plaster also helped adhere itself to the existing straw of the walls. Seth would experiment with different textures and drying engines, like cotton tails, for example. I could tell he really cared about, you know, what was going into the home, experimenting and, and learning about these alternative home building techniques. It was really cool to, to be a part of. Now our collective goal was to further the completion of this house. Um, so many hands, friends and, and family had already touched it in, in, in helping to build it. And I was happy to be a part of that. Um, now, being way up there, we didn't have a ton of entertainment. And so on any given day when we were working, uh, you could almost bet on hearing the local community radio stations, either KZYX for Mendocino County or KMUD for Humboldt County. Alrighty, alrighty. This is KZYX Philo 90.7 FM, KZYZ Willits and Ukiah 91.5 FM, and 88.1 FM in Fort Bragg. So on a normal day, I might be plastering in one of the rooms. Tim might be doing any number of things, sanding, planing, routing, carpenter stuff. Well... At least as far as the Bay Area, I'm sure. Five minutes left in the show. Following this show is, of course, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. And following that will be Mr. Clay Hawkins with Dusty Roads and Dirty Strings. Caller, you're live on the air. Hey, it's Sky Captain and Ukiah. Hi, Sky Captain. Hey, somebody 
Now, if I wasn't working on the house, usually I'd be in the garden well, helping Seth. Toyota T100. Mm-hmm. I don't want it, but I want the bed. <laughs> okay. So I got the T100 with the broken bed that I oh. need to fix. So uh, I'm wondering if they have that or any of the other parts. Okay. And if we get that, maybe we'll see my T100 up for sale in the next couple of weeks on trading time. Oh, cool. Great. <laughs> um, all right, Sky Captain, what's the phone number? 5357. Five, Thanks very much. 5357. Thanks very much. Mm-hmm. Sky Captain right. is, of course, famous on trading time for selling an airplane or attempting to sell an airplane. <laughs> we love that. Um, kind of petered out here at the end of the drive, so I am going to play this for you. You know, in the evenings, after a good day's work, we'd all hang out in the tent. Can I make faces? Do whatever you want. Okay. And I'm really stupid faces. You're going to really stupid. Yeah. This really is I am cooking in uh, California. Tim sulked in his Amazon chair. Selena worked on her comic illustrations as she was an artist. And Anna mostly just hung out with Jack. So I mentioned that Dandelion was very into that kind of witchy holistic practice. Well, I wanted to highlight that a little bit. For brief background on, on what's taking place, Tim and Selena had already gotten married previously, and although Selena was still struggling with gaining permanent residency status in the United States, they wanted to have an Italian wedding as well, for her family to be able to participate in their relationship. As a fun idea, they wanted everybody at reception to take a love potion if they so desired. It wasn't some sort of magical tincture. Each ingredient sort of had its own effects that it could provide. It was really cool to be a part of. This was something I touched on in video 3, but Realizing that it isn't necessarily the ritual itself that does any kind of magic, but rather the intention that you're putting into what you're doing that makes something special. This can be true in any spirituality, religion, even a professional trade, just something you practice. Some people focus that energy on, on immaterial things and, and what they believe, and other people focus it more on material things, uh, like the earth or, or what it provides us. Now the Peruvian tobacco, we saw Tim smoking in the introduction, was exhaled by both lovers into the concoction that would be sealed and, and left until the day of their celebration. I lived on this lonely mountain with Seth and his community for about six weeks. As with all of my hosts, we were total strangers when I first arrived. Yet, even though the property was remote, I met people from all over the world who came for either the house, the people, the community, or a combination of all these things. I'll have fond memories of working with these people. The late night weatherproofing, the house in preparation for coming rain that California so desperately needed. Getting my hands dirty in the garden. Food wasn't the only thing that was growing each day. <laughs> and boy, the tomatoes. There were multiple harvests. So been where I just One of them, Seth and I sliced and sun dried. So we will share this Another, Anna and I boiled and, and canned for, for the winter. You know, this was truly a place where everything kind of worked itself out. Everything coexisted harmonically, from the gentle creatures to the deadly ones. Towards the end of my stay, Dandelion organized a, a Halloween and harvest party, as it was already the end of October. We invited everybody we knew.
Neighbors came together to celebrate a good year. Everybody contributed what they could. And even if it was just themselves, that's all anybody could ever ask. If you've been outside, you know what we're talking about. If you haven't, don't go outside. Stay inside. Let's give you a little look around the Bay Area at the current conditions. Four different pictures. What do they have in common? They're all nearly socked in by the smoke. Livermore, Oakland, San Francisco, all reporting very unhealthy air. San Jose seeing unhealthy conditions as well. We have now, the campfire started in Butte County on November 8, 2018. It was the day that me and Anna were canning tomatoes. That morning, a haze had started over the ridge, and by the afternoon, we could no longer see the sun. Along with wood smoke, Prunicky says the air lingering over the Bay Area could contain plastics, solvents, and other chemicals that burned in paradise, and that there just isn't enough data on their effects from long-term exposure. Is it fair to say, then, that we're in the midst of what could be a giant experiment right now? I think that's fair to say. If the Bay Area is complaining about the smoke here, you can imagine how we felt up here, with an air quality peaking around 370. Now if you remember the solar panel I showed you at the beginning of the video, this was the same ridge the next day when we woke up and realized that the wind wouldn't be changing anytime soon. And so we left. Tim and Selena in their van, me and Anna in my car where I dropped her off at the bus station to spend a weekend in the cities before returning back to her home country. Before we all left town, we stopped and got coffee where Selena quickly checked the mail and was pleasantly surprised to find that she had finally gained the permanent residency that she'd been fighting so long for. Her and Tim took a little trip up the coast for a few days to get clear of the smoke while Seth and Dandelion waited it out at a neighbor's house. This was the last I saw of them all, as I never ended up returning after that. Well, in the hopes of keeping this video shorter than a full-length TV episode, I realized that uh, the Bay Area was smoky, there was a fire in Malibu, I believe the, the Santa Rosa Valley had a fire at the time, Willits, north of us. There's a lot of fire going on, and uh, it's really unfortunate for, for all the people that either lost their lives or, or lost their homes. Um, Fortunately, the Butte fire was contained. I just want to quickly thank Seth, Tim, Selena, Dandelion, Anna, everybody that I met in Ukiah from the bottom of my heart made me feel like I belong. I was more than glad to be able to contribute. I'm more than happy I came, and I'll be doing so very shortly. Thanks, guys, and thank everybody else who's been watching. I'm now in Myrtle Creek. I came back, and I think I'm going to be staying here for the winter. Um, that might mean there's not going to be any more videos for a while, but we'll see. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of your day.